Meanwhile, in related news, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett visiting the White House for his first official meeting as Prime Minister opposite President Joe Biden. And Bennett hoping to usher in a new era of cooperation between Israel and its greatest ally, the United States. Bennett claiming that relations were damaged by the Netanyahu government and that it's time for a reset. Of course, the Israeli premier also set to discuss a number of security concerns from the Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza to coronavirus, technology and Iran. Bennett saying that he'll present the White House with an alternative to the JCPOA nuclear deal, which Israel has continuously criticized. Joining me now with more is fellow at JPPI and head of communications at Sharaka, IDF Reserves Major Dan Pfefferman. Major, thanks so much for being with us again. Now, uh, Prime Minister Bennett is saying that he wants to reset relations with the United States, saying that uh, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Netanyahu screwed things up with the American left spe specifically. Do you agree with this premise? And if so, how important is this meeting for mending relations between the governments? Right. I mean, Prime Minister Bennett certainly wants to reset these relations. He's made it a top priority after the relationship between uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Obama uh, had been strained. This was partly due to, a let's, let's be honest, a personality clash between the two leaders, part of it, the compositions of the governments and the, the various advisors in the government. I also think there was a gamble, or partly a gamble on the part of Netanyahu, who maybe presumptuously assessed that the Democratic Party had abandoned Israel with no chance to save it. And then, of course, you had four years of Netanyahu working very closely with Trump. It helped that ideologically they were aligned on many issues that led to a massive polarization in the U.S. And this strain, this led to the strain that we saw bled into uh, the beginning of the Biden presidency, even though uh, Joe Biden has long been a friend of Israel. Uh, both presidents are also going to be looking for foreign policy wins. Uh, President Biden is dealing with the blowback, the PR blowback from Afghanistan right now. Uh, Prime Minister Bennett is dealing with the challenges of COVID in Gaza. It's everyone's interest that this goes smoothly. And I think on a personality level, I think they, they will probably get along. They're both very personable and amenable leaders. What we shouldn't expect is on a policy level, very little is expected to change. And yet, it's still an important meeting. They get off on a good foot. Uh, and we shouldn't discount the importance of rhetoric and goodwill. Um, if the previous uh, administrations uh, during Obama's time and during Netanyahu, they preferred more public statements and maybe kind of tension uh, leaks to the press, it looks like these two leaders are going to take a more conciliatory public approach. Uh, and behind the scenes look to compromise, collaborate, and be uh, pragmatic where they can. And, and I think it's a very important meeting in that regard. Well, and of course, coming along with what you've said, you know, we've seen plenty of reports saying that the uh, Bennett and, and Lapid government will speak more directly with the, with the Biden administration as opposed to how Netanyahu uh, kind of did whatever uh, they wanted. Uh, but moving on to the Iran issue, it's expected to top the agenda with, with Bennett vehemently opposed to the re-entering uh, of the arguably irrelevant nuclear deal. Uh, and Bennett is instead proposing his new regional coalition plan, which includes economic sanctions, mobilizing international pressures, and continuing clandestine campaigns against the nuclear program. But what exactly does that mean? And, and how is it really different than the JCPOA, with the exception of the clandestine actions? Right. Look, the JCPOA uh, had a lot of flaws and weaknesses to it, but it wasn't useless. Uh, now that the U.S. left it uh, back in 2018, we're in a new reality. Iran is violating the agreement. It's enriching more. It's stockpiling more uranium. It's adding more advanced centrifuges, and it's trying to pressure the U.S., um, but it's also getting closer to having a nuclear weapons capability. It's up to 60 percent enrichment. It's blocking inspectors, and all this was confirmed by the uh, IEA. Um, Iran's new president, Raisi, backed by the Supreme Leader Khamenei, are stalling. Uh, they're saying, uh, let's wait till September. Uh, it seems like they're taking a tougher line. They're refusing to negotiate the, the, the so to speak, uh, longer and stronger deal that the Biden team wants to achieve. 
Um, I, I don't know exactly what this new plan of Bennett's will entail. Um, what I think should happen here and what they should strive for in the, in the talks between them when they meet, Israel should not back any kind of weak JCPOA, especially if there isn't a rollback um, to, to the nuclear limitations since uh, 2018 and, and all the stockpiling Iran has done since then. Um, if Biden can advance on that front and, and get Iran to roll back its deal, it should do that. And Israel, uh, you know, these two things are not mutually exclusive. Israel should continue its regional campaign against Iran. This is what Bennett's talking about. You, should, you can do it in quiet cooperation with new regional allies. That's a good thing. Um, certainly coordinate steps with the U.S., share intelligence with the U.S., and, uh, you know, push back Iran's proxy behavior in the region, which was not affected by the JCPOA deal. So uh, even if they don't uh, agree, they can agree to disagree and still work on a lot of levels together, especially including intelligence sharing, and uh, maybe in the same way that Iran employs its proxies around the region, uh, the U.S. and Israel and other regional powers work in a similar kind of uh, dance. All right. My final question, I want to move on to the Palestinian uh, uh, conflict with, with, uh, with Israel. It, it's been largely suggested that the Bennett government is working on this pragmatic policy of finding the commonality between the very wide array of ideologies in the coalition and focusing on those particular uh, uh, issues where they agree only. Now, a two-state solution is not one of those issues. Uh, Ayelet Sheked, number two, uh, in the Yamina party under Prime Minister Bennett, even said that, uh, you know, if Lapid, alternate Prime Minister Lapid, tries to push a two-state solution, they'll break the coalition up. Now, moving on to the Biden administration, a two-state solution, they are pro-two-state solution. Are we going to see a similar approach from the Biden administration when working with Israel, do you think, in terms of pragmatism and focusing on, on commonalities? Or do you think that there's going to be some pushback uh, uh, and some conflict with, with issues like this? Well, this is one of those issues where it could go either way, depending on how the sides choose to manage this relationship. And it's clearly one of the sticking points in policy between the two administrations. As you said, even within this government, there is no consensus. You have on one side the right-wing elements who are in favor of settlement expansion and opposed to a two-state solution at almost any cost. And on the other side, you have the more moderate elements, uh, Lapid, and of course, Mirav Mikhail, and Nitzan Horowitz, and probably even Benny Gantz, who are going to be against settlement expansion and in favor, at least theoretically in the future, of some kind of two-state solution. I think at this point in time, there are two things that both sides uh, can and should agree on. Um, and they can use this as the bedrock for cooperation and coordination at this time. One is that uh, no matter what the U.S. or Israel wants or doesn't want, there is absolutely no unified leadership on the Palestinian side capable of bringing any kind of political agreement. Um, there wouldn't be any uh, or very little public support on the Palestinian side, even if Israel were to come with a far-reaching offer, and they are continuing to fight amongst themselves. Uh, and I think both sides can agree to that point. Secondly, is uh, both Biden and Bennett and the entire coalition should be able to agree on many practical moves to improve mm. the day-to-day -day lives of Palestinians and the stability of, uh, of life, of infrastructure, of governance in currently in the West Bank and eventually Gaza, economic, civic society, education, okay. health care. Um, whether you envision a two-state solution or whatever it is that Bennett and people on the Israeli right envision, both of those have in common the need to start by now reducing tension and friction between uh, Israelis and Palestinians in everyday life by improving the economy, by improving, uh, by improving what day-to-day -day life looks like. And whatever uh, decisions Israel comes to uh, at the end of the day regarding the future of its relationship with the Palestinians and uh, the West Bank, uh, moving along this road of pragmatic improvements is common to both of them, and that's something they can and should agree on. All right. Major Pfefferman, thank you so, so much for joining us again. Pleasure.